Hello all, welcome to Tech Vistas. In my architectural patterns video, I have covered various architectural patterns till now. So now in this video, we will talk about event driven architecture. So we'll discuss like what is what we mean by the event driven architecture and the various topologies uh, which we can utilize uh, for this architecture. Like there are two topologies, uh, mediator and broker. So we will see them uh, in a detailed manner and understand the various applications along with uh, the how this pattern uh, fares with various uh, parameters such as scalability, agility and few more uh, parameters, right? So let's start on this uh, understanding the this architecture pattern. So uh, whenever our system is distributed, right? So there will be uh, like many systems or applications interacting with each other. So one way is that they can interact with each other in a real time manner and they keep waiting for response uh, from the uh, call service, right? But sometime uh, we can wait uh, for that processing, right? So uh, for those business scenarios, uh, this event driven architecture is really uh, very important because uh, some events are not that uh, like uh, we have to process them very quickly uh, because they're not urgent, right? So something like is not urgent because and suppose you want to uh, check your account balance, right? It might be urgent. You want to withdraw the money from ATM, it's urgent, right? But if you want to change your address, it might, it might, uh, if it might take like suppose 30 minutes or maybe one hour, that is fine, right? You're not just uh, waiting uh, to just uh, change it right away, right? So for those type of events, uh, when uh, we can tolerate uh, some kind of wait times uh, for those, uh, those event uh, can be processed lately, right? So maybe after some time. So here I have taken example of a bank. So a customer walks into the branch office of a bank and says, okay, now I have uh, changed my uh, address, finally update it. And we just give one application uh, maybe hard copy, uh, maybe also he can uh, use online as well and goes away, right? So now the the banking application that is basically having the uh, profile service API will change the uh, the that address maybe in like uh, for the uh, savings account, right? But that uh, that person might be having multiple relationship with the bank, might be. Uh, he's having an insurance policy, also running a mortgage with the bank, maybe also having the credit cards, right? So there's also a requirement to update address into the various systems because uh, normally all those systems are separate in the bank, right? Because uh, there may be different departments or applications. So now in this scenario, event driven architecture can be utilized because when a customer gave a request uh, to change his or her address, that is done maybe for the savings account or current account. But now it's an event, right? That event should be known to all other systems as well. So that event can be uh, pushed to an event queue. For event queue, uh, nowadays we use Kafka. Earlier we used to have MQ, MQ, MQ those products as well. I mean, any queue, right? If suppose you are putting a message on the queue and then uh, that event is read by the multiple systems of the bank, right? So now insurance uh, system and home loan system and also the credit card system will listen to that address change request and they will do the event processing for that particular request, right? So this is the, the, the main idea about event driven is that that event is driving uh, itself, right? So event is just uh, going through the whole system and the, the systems which are required to be aware, they are doing the processing. So this is basically uh, called the uh, event driven architecture. In event driven architecture, there are two uh, popular topologies. 
uh, one is the mediated topology and another is the broker topology. So now let us uh, look uh, these topologies one by one. So in, in mediated topology, we have like a one event mediator, right? So, uh, so we require a kind of a orchestrator. So that can orchestrate the event to the various event processors, right? So here you can see in the red box that event is triggered and it is placed to the event event queue, right? So that event queue will be holding the event, but now the orchestrator, which is basically the event mediator in this uh, case, will be pushing uh, that uh, event to the various channels, right? So there are uh, three event channels. And from these uh, three event channels, this will be processed by the various event processors. So uh, we use uh, this topology whenever we require some kind of the orchestrator, right? Because maybe uh, th there would be uh, some uh, some uh, some requirement, right? Whenever for those requirement, uh, we need some kind of a central uh, component that can orchestrate. We use uh, the uh, this type of topology, right? The mediator one. And uh, for example, suppose uh, you are building a application for the stock trading, right? So whenever uh, some customer want to purchase a stock and they click on the buy, right? So that will trigger a buy event, right? So, but now that buy event cannot be processed until unless there will be some prerequisite, uh, those will be uh, first uh, checked, right? For example, uh, check whether uh, the customer has enough money or not in his account, uh, well, they did the trade, uh, trade codes, and also calculate the brokerage amount. So maybe uh, you will require like uh, three, four event processor before actually processing the uh, that buy request from a trader, right? So that uh, that kind of a uh, request, I mean uh, requirement, when we need uh, some kind of a event mediator uh, to orchestrate the event uh, processing, uh, then at uh, the time we use this uh, type of topology. Now uh, let's understand uh, uh, this by a like, few more examples. So suppose, for example, uh, you uh, are the insurance company and you develop an event-based uh, event system, right? And your customer has changed the address. Now the change of address is an event. And that event uh, is requiring some kind of uh, mediator uh, using the uh, this uh, mediated pattern because uh, whenever you are changing the address of a uh, I mean customer and system it required to update the uh, profile of customer also maybe uh, it need to calculate the code again because customer geography might impact the uh, the premium of the policy and also in case uh, if there are some uh, and there are some claims under processing those also require the updation right so now uh, here when customer fires an event of address change so the event mediator will uh, basically orchestrate uh, this event uh, using the uh, change address component the cal calculate cal code update claim address claim whatever like notify in short so all these are the event only but there will be some mediation uh, using the uh, mediator pattern uh, so that uh, there will be sync uh, some sync between the various events, which are like sub events, uh, which are triggered by the main event of address change, right? So in this case, we will use this uh, topology where we need the uh, mediator uh, component, right? So now let's understand about the broker topology. So in broker topology, what happens is that there is no uh, mediator component. Uh, whatever event we are finding, for example, if you take the same uh, same analogy like uh, insured person has changed his address. So now uh, that is going to trigger the profile update, right, for customer. So, but that event will be pushed to the uh, event event channels. And now uh, those uh, other systems, like for example, code process or claim processes, if they are interested, 
they are going to process that event as well right so maybe that will that will be list, those who will be listening to this event uh, at the at the uh, at the queue and do the processing uh, as per their requirement maybe there will be some more event processor uh, who doesn't bother about this address change so they will not do any action so now in this there is no component which is doing a mediation between or uh, orchestrate, uh, orchestrating between uh, the various events but events are itself uh, being propagated um, in such a way that they are uh, being listened to the system interested and doing the processing so in this uh, we call is a uh, broker topology so in this there is no component which is doing the mediation among the various event processes so now uh, i think uh, we have covered the concept behind the event driven architecture and also uh, the two topologies uh, so now let us understand uh, what is the pattern uh, how pattern fits into our requirement maybe suppose uh, we want to see like okay can we get high performance so definitely we can get high performance because all the components are decoupled so uh, it's not i mean so system is not waiting for any resource right so suppose uh, if uh, if uh, system A is doing some event processing, uh, another system is not waiting for that. So resources are free, right? So it can achieve a high performance uh, for this uh, pattern. Second thing is scalability. Same region that all the uh, components are uh, loosely coupled and they can be scaled independently because uh, there is no tight coupling between each component, right? For example. Uh, you want to scale up uh, one event listener, event processor, right? You can do it very well. Maybe if you're using the uh, Docker Kubernetes, you can add one few more pods to process your request. Uh, I mean, and it's achieve the high scalability. Now, uh, whatever like your development is uh, low, uh, because uh, you now you have to uh, create the contract in a such way that uh, the event which are, which is being passed through the multiple systems right so understand that event right so suppose uh, you have uh, one event being processed by the five event listeners or even processors right so you have to make sure that uh, all those five systems could read or understand your request structure so now you have to have like more coordination among the various departments or applications such that whatever contract you are creating uh, for the event message that should be consistent and should be able to be processed by each system in the uh, each application in the system right now agility is uh, definitely high because system is easily decoupled and uh, if one failure will not trigger to another failure maybe uh, some event will be uh, not processed uh, like in one area of the application but uh, there will be no other no will be no uh, negative impact on other part of system right system is highly agile now also it is easy to deploy because uh, all the components are developed separately uh, so maybe they can be deployed into the um, different containers or maybe even if uh, one component is in uh, one language say java another is another language say dot net that can also be uh, deployed separately so there is no there is no dependency in deployment uh, because all components are um, like developed separately then the stability is definitely low uh, because I mean individually you can test each uh, each component but if you want to uh, see the behavior across all the uh, all the event processes so that testing might need some kind of a sophisticated tools uh, so that you can simulate that uh, one event is uh, flowing through the whole system so testability might be low uh, for this event driven pattern right so I think uh, that's it uh, for this video I have tried to make you understand about uh, this pattern. Please ask any questions uh, in the comment box. I will definitely answer. And uh, please subscribe as well uh, if you like my videos. Uh, thank you very much.